Good morning. Good morning to all. It's great to be to be with you. I love something that starts on time too. That's a good job, Carol. So there are still people trickling in though. It was hard to find a uh, a spot out there, so I hope they can all make it in. And and thank you, uh, thank you, Bud, for your your uh, um, incredible remembrance and the work that you do here. Uh, very kind introduction and for chairing the uh, empowering the next generation campaign. I know Carol is so involved in that. Uh, this fund is visionary in terms of its expansion of the St. Louis Holocaust Museum and Learning Center. Your whole team has um, has worked tirelessly to raise. I know over 80 percent of the $18 million goal. And I caught your vision uh, last October when I met with uh, all of you and uh, Greg, Karen, Don, the whole team, and I'm uh, not at all surprised by your success. Uh, and to Sandy, where is Sandy? She's in back working, welcome, I should say, and welcome back. <laughs> You're taking the helm at uh, such an exciting time in the Holocaust Museum's history, and I know you're gonna be an exemplary leader. I'm honored to have played a, uh, a part in championing the Federation's National Endowment of the Arts Challenge Grant application, and it was truly a thrill to make a call letting you know that the $750,000 grant had been awarded. Yes. <laughs> This grant will support the first major updates uh, to the Holocaust Museum in 25 years. Uh, expansion and modernization are vital to the museum's mission of education and are going to help, going to help accommodate an increasing number of visitors from uh, all over uh, the world. The new facility will double the current space and provide interactive and multimedia exhi exhibits that put visitors right in the heart of history. I am very pleased the new space will be more prominent, flexible, and accessible. And I have to say, what an appropriate and special way to commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, as uh, Elie Wiesel said, his, his quote, for the dead and the living, we must bear witness. As decades pass and we lose survivors, liberators, and witnesses, the artifacts and the oral histories preserved in this building take on even greater significance. And while the Jewish Federation leaders and so many in our community are stepping up to educate the next generation about the horrors of the Holocaust, um, I believe we in Congress have the same responsibility. I can say that just last January, just a, one year ago, the president signed the Elie Wiesel Genocide and Atrocities Prevention Act, a bill that I introduced and championed to improve uh, U.S. efforts to prevent mass atrocity crimes. The legislation honors the legacy of Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel and his life work to fight evil around the world. Mr. Wiesel uh, was just 15 years old when the Nazis deported him and his family to Auschwitz. Having witnessed the near total destruction of his people, he spent his life defending the persecuted. As Mr. Uh, Wiesel understood so well, the true horror of genocide is that it is preventable. The United States is a global leader in genocide and atrocities response, but we must shift our attention towards prevention so that no one ever becomes a victim in the first place. The Elie Wiesel Act establishes that it is the official policy of the United States to regard atrocities prevention as a core national security interest and to address root causes of conflict through our humanitarian development and strategic endeavors. I look forward to continuing this fight and ensuring that the administration fully implements the law. And in the meantime, I have been proud to champion bipartisan legislation to protect and strengthen the friendship between the United States and Israel. It is unconscionable that anti-Israel actors are seeking to delegitimize and isolate the state of Israel through the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Movement, or BDS. With my colleagues, Representative Brad Schneider, Jerry Nadler, and Lee Zeldin, I introduced the bipartisan House Resolution 246 to condemn the BDS movement, which is fundamentally inimical 
to achieving a two-state solution to the Israel-Palestinian conflict. The resolution also expresses Congress's strong support for U.S.-Israel relationship. I'm happy to say that the re resolution was agreed to in the House with 398 votes of support. I believe it sends a clear message of support to the people of Israel. We stand with Israel and we will work to strengthen and deepen ties between our nations. The necessity of these bills is proof that more education and awareness are needed. We must indeed empower the next generation of leaders to understand the lessons of the horror of the Holocaust and the importance of our relationship with Israel. The new Holocaust Museum and Learning Center will be a world-class institution and a tremendous asset to our community and the region. I'm honored to represent this important institution in the United States Congress and to support the campaign to empower the next generation. I can't wait for the day we cut the ribbon and invite the public to experience your vision uh, and all the work you have poured into this tremendous effort. I wanna thank you. Um, sadly, <laughs> well, it'll be tight. I must take my leave. I have, we have votes tonight in the House and I have to try and catch a Southwest Airlines flight, which is, of course, on time. So, uh, so I am going to take my leave, but uh, I think you all are you necked on deck. Please welcome uh, Carol uh, Steinberg, uh, Capital Campaign Chair, who's done so much work, as I said, in raising over 80% of that money already. Uh, congratulations to you. Welcome to Carol. Thank you all. Uh, to be a part of the celebration is very special.